Hi, I'm Dylan Anderson with Coda Bears, and today we're going to go over working with reports in Epicor version 10.2.300. Today we're going to go over duplicating report data definition, adding additional tables and fields to a report data definition, creating a report relationship in a report data definition, duplicating report style in SSRs report, and then customizing our duplicated SSRs report to include the new fields. So first we're going to go into Epicor main menu, system management, and then reporting. And then we're going to click on report data definition. And then this is what your report data definition window should look like. Go ahead and click on code. And in this example I'm going to be modifying the sales order pick list to include the net weight and net weight UOM of a part. So in our starting at, I'm going to type in SO pick and then click search. You can also type things like pick, space, and then list, and then search through here for uh, SO pick and the system report data definition. We're going to copy the report data definition. That way we don't have any custom. And the reason why um, we don't want to copy a different custom one is because that custom one might be missing some data that we might need or might have additional data that we don't need and we don't want to include our, in our new custom sales order pick list report. So by the system flag here, I know that this is the system report data definition. So now that that's highlighted, I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go to actions and click duplicate report. And then here, you're going to get a re duplicate report definition window. For report definition ID, it can be really anything you want. I wouldn't recommend any spaces or any special characters in this uh, field here. Um, and for organizational purposes, I like to name them similar to the system ones. So when I'm doing a search in here looking for a custom one, I can just type in basically SO pick and see all my custom SO pick lists. So for report definition ID, I'm going to type SO pick and then C. And then for my description, I'm going to do the, I'm going to type SO pick list custom. And then click OK. And then here I'm just going to go ahead and expand my tree view here just to see what I'm working with. So here are all my data sources, which are, they're, they're Epicor tables. So on this paper icon up here, there's a little carrot. carrot. I'm going to click on that carrot to get this drop down here and then click new table. We're going to add in the part table so that way we can pull in our net weight and net weight UAM for our parts. So once you clicked on the new table, we're going to leave the report table field here blank and then click on schema table. And then at starting at, we're going to type in part and click search. There we go. Our first one is our part table here. We're going to click on that and click OK. And as you can see here, it already filled in the report table for, for us. That is why we didn't type it in before searching for our part table. And then we're going to go ahead and click Save up here. And then go to the Exclusions tab. In Epicor 10.2.300, I've noticed that our fields are not showing up here like they should um, after clicking Save and then going to Exclusions. So I'm going to click on the Refresh button to go ahead and refresh the window here. All right, after my refresh is complete, I'm going to click back on my Part table over here under Data Sources in the Tree View. And on my Exclusions tab here, I can see that all of my part fields are already excluded for me. So now I just need to uncheck the exclude column on the fields that we need. So first, I'm going to go ahead and search for net, net weight and net weight uh, unit of measure. And here's our two fields. And I'm going to go ahead and uncheck exclude column next to both of them. In this demonstration, I'm not going to uncheck the exclude label checkbox mostly because I want to create my own static label and I want it to say what I want. Um, if you uncheck those boxes, you might get a label that says net weight and I don't want to, I don't want a label that says net weight on my, on my custom sales order pick list report. I just want it to say weight. So now that those are unchecked, we're going to need to uncheck two more fields. And this is going to be because we're going to create a relationship between our part and our order detail tables. 
and the like fields, the like key fields in both of those is part number and company. We always link company because you can have the same part number but in a different company. And we don't want any duplicate rows or records. So here's our company. We're going to go ahead and uncheck exclude column for that and then search for part num and we're going to uncheck exclude column there as well. We don't need to uncheck the exclude labels because we're not going to actually use these fields on our report. They're already there for us from the order detail table. This is just going to create a relationship. So once you've unchecked those, click save, go back to your carrot here and then click new relationship. And then it's going to bring you to the list view possibly so just go ahead and click back on detail under re the relationships tab so that you're at a window like this. And then for relationship, I like to keep it kind of consistent of what Epicor's already been doing. As you can see in the tree view there, uh, under the report relationships, I'm going to just type something similar. So order detail and then part, because it's going to be an order detail to part relationship. And then for description, um, I'm going to type order detail to part relationship. This can really be whatever you want. And then for the parent, we're going to select the parent table, which is the order detail table. And then the key, um, if there is something here, go ahead and just select whatever's there. Usually it should, there's usually normally one thing there, but PK underscore order detail uh, is what's there. So I'm going to select that. Child, I'm going to select part. And then relationship type, I'm going to click output. That way our data gets outputted. So I'm going to go ahead and click save after filling in all those fields there. And then as you can see, it's already created a relationship fields. And the reason for that is because of that key field here. It knows that those are like fields, so it went ahead and created a relationship fields for us. If it doesn't, you're going to have to manually add them yourself by this paper icon here, and then you just use the drop downs. So I'm going to go ahead and click save just to make sure that it's saved. And now all our work for a report data definition is done here because we've added a table in a relationship and we've in, we've unexcluded our net weight and net weight UOM fields. Now there's one thing, just keep a mental note of SOPIC-C as the ID because we're going to need to set that to our report style. So go ahead and get out of the report data definition window. We're done with that for now. And then go to under the same system management reporting, go to report style and then click on report ID and the ID is usually the same as the system report data definition so we're going to search for SOPIC and there it is. So just highlight that if it's not highlighted click it and then click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and expand to see what we're working with here, what, what our available report styles are. Um, the standard SSRS report style here is normally our system one. And you can verify that by going to the styles tab, style detail, and the detail tab and checking the report location. Report slash sales order pick list. That is how I know that is a system one. If it was a custom one, it would be report slash custom reports slash sales order pick list, blah, blah, blah. So with standard dash SSRS selected, go to actions and then click copy report style. And then here you're going to get a report copy location uh, window. You can change your uh, report folder name if you want to um, just by double clicking here and then typing something new. Um, since there's nothing here at this location already, I'm just going to go ahead and click copy. Oh, look at that. Looks like I did have something out in that location. So I can pick to overwrite uh, reports that are already there. I know from previous from a previous example I created these, so I'm just going to overwrite both of them and then click copy. If you don't want to overwrite them, you can actually ch change some of the fields here. Um, you can add like a C or a one at the end of this and then click copy. If you didn't ch set, change your folder name at that report uh, copy window. So once that is copied, I'm going to click on the standard SSRS copy and then I'm going to give this a new description. I want to give it SO pick list with 
wait. And this is what shows up in the drop down of like the report windows inside of Epicor. So like if you go to sales order pick list in Epicor, you'll see this as a report style drop down. And then click save. Everything else um, except for data definition, I'm going to change that to SO pick C because that's our custom report data definition with our added fields. This is going to get our fields onto our report. If once you change that, click on save and then click sync data set. What syncing data set basically does is it matches the SSRS RDL file on the report portal data definition up with the report data definition here in your Epicor system that we just created. It'll say SSRS report is synchronized with report data definition and that's how you know it was done. So just click OK and then here we're pretty much good to go. You can just keep note of this report location because that's where we're going to go in our report portal to edit our new duplicated system report. So I'm just going to close out a report style maintenance and then go over to the inter Internet Explorer here and usually you'll navigate to your report um, SSRS portal. If you don't know what this URL is, get it from your IT department because every environment is set up differently. Um, it's usually the HTTP colon slash slash your report your SSRS report server name slash reports and then here uh, once you get to your you'll probably have multiple folders at first at the root directory that says like training or test and prod and whatever environment you're working with to create this report you should always probably do it in test first and then when you've tested it all out move to prod um, you're going to select on that folder and then you're going to see a reports folder. You're going to select the reports folder. This is when our location that we just took a mental note of from our report style maintenance. Um, it's going to be report slash custom reports. I'm going to go ahead and just control F and then type in custom reports in the search here and select that folder once it finds it. That's just a quicker way to navigating. And then here's the sales order pick list folder and then inside of it there's a few sub reports we're not going to touch these sub reports we're just going to touch the master report which is the SO pick L so once you hover your mouse over SO pick L click on the little carrot and then click edit in report builder click on run and then it's going to download a report builder for us once your sales order pick list report has opened up in report builder you'll see something kind of like this it can be a little confusing at first but if you just look here like I know this section um, is to do with kits and then this is this is part numbers this is just the general pick list here and this is where we're going to actually drop our field so I'm going to go ahead and click on this uh, this is like a table I'm going to expand this row a little bit so we have some space to drop our fields in and then over here to the left, there's another tree view. We're going to go ahead and expand data sets. Um, it's the order head data set. And then scroll down here and look for our net weight and net weight unit of measure fields. Usually when I add new fields, they like to appear at the bottom of that data set. And here they are. Here they are. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the net weight field and just drag and drop it over here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the net weight UOM. Alrighty, I can see here that it's added a, a sum function to the net weight. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and then go to text box properties and then click on my function icon here and remove the sum because we don't need to sum anything here. It's sh because of our, our join to part num, it should only show the net weight for that part. So click OK, OK, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the net weight UOM. I'm going to take out the first column, the first function, and then click OK and OK. And I'm going to go ahead and just resize this a little weight. I know that the unit of measure is like two characters. I give it an extra character. And then I, I like to click on um, another field here 
and just kind of get uh, an idea of what the format is. So that's nine point font. So I'm going to go ahead and set this as nine point font. And this one is nine point font to match the rest of my port. And I'm going to go ahead and click on a field up here and then hold down shift or actually control and then click on uh, each of your fields. And I like to right click, go to layout and then make the same height. I don't want to do the same width because it's not going to be the same length as the line description. And for net weight and then net weight UOM, I'm just going to kind of join these together a little bit and format it a little bit more under text box properties. Um, you can go to number and then number and then I want to use two decimal places. This is fine, so I'll click OK. Um, I, I'm not going to have to nor, uh, format the unit of measure because that's already already text. And I'm just going to move this up over here so we could eliminate some of this white space down here by dragging our row back up. And there we go. And then in here I'm going to right click in this white space here and then go to insert and click on text box. I'm going to double click on this text box and type weight. This is going to be my label. And then I'm going to just click back into this white space and click back into the text box so that I can select it like that to change the font uh, back to nine point. And then you can use the um, same way we resize those two text box. I'm going to click on line description field here, hold down control, click on weight, right click, go to layout, and then make same height. And I'm just going to adjust the width of it myself, but make sure you're not you're you're still not connected to that line description because we don't want to change the weight of them both at the same time. Just bring that down, drag this up over next to my net weight here and click on the bold for weight so then that way I like a bolded, I like a nice bolded label. Um, I know that looks cut off here sometimes but however when the report prints it, it's normally not cut off. Um, if the report prints and this is cut off you can just go ahead and drag those little these little squares out to give it some more room. Um, since I added that text box it expanded my row again. I'm just going to pull my row up a little bit more and then click on save. And now I have a label, net weight, and the net weight u unit of measure. So let me go ahead and go back into Epicor and I'm going to test my report. So I'm going to go to sales management, order management, reports, select sales order pick list. Then I'm going to go to filter and then part and then click on part and I'm just going to select a few parts here just to test out my pick list. And I'm going to click print preview. And then here you can see uh, my weight And then here you can see on our sales order picklist report that the weight came over. Currently set up in part maintenance. I don't have a weight for this, but the unit of measure is set on grams at zero grams. And that will conclude on working with SSRS reports in Epicor 10.2.300.